Hello everyone, welcome in the second part of your column design and detailing in the RCDC. In the previous part, we have already seen that how we can take Microsoft Access file and make your file ready with your column design in the RCDC. Also we have seen that how we can take our basic load cases here and we can make it considerations in our RCDC for your column design. And along with that we have already seen about the load conditions also. So these things already we have seen that how we can consider our load conditions in the RCDC. Along with that we have seen that column layout, design input, column reference, column sizes, level data, shift of CG, frame type. In this particular lecture of your column design in RCDC we are going to look at the design setting. So this is very important things we are going to look at in this particular lecture of your RCDC. Before going to do auto design in the RCDC we have to look at the design settings. So in the design setting the first thing we will find here that we will get a ductile setting here. So this is the first thing you will find here and in this ductile setting there is two things one is your perform ductile design and second is your joint check. So this very important things you have to do in the design setting of your ductile design. First we look at perform ductile design. Now these options should only be ticked when you are going to perform your ductile design. As you already know that when we have to perform the ductile design. So these things we have already seen in our column design of ETABS. So in the ETABS we have looked upon that when to perform the ductile design and when not to perform the ductile design. So these things we have already discussed on the column design of ETABS. So I am not going to discuss here once again but if you are going to perform the ductile design then you have to take these options. So you already know that we are going to use response reduction factor as a 5. So in that case we have to perform our ductile design. So I will first change this 3 to 5 and after that I will just take these options to perform our ductile design in the column. So this is the very important setting you have to take this. Instead of using response reduction factor as a 5. If you have used the theory, in that time you no need to take this option. You can perform the normal design. But if you are going to give the response reduction as a 5, in that case you have to take these options to perform your ductile design. I think you are very clear about that. If you are going to perform the ductile design, then you have to take this option for performing this ductile design. So this setting, I think you are very clear about this. Now come to the next setting that is a joint check for Pmax and all the load combinations. So this is the part of your ductile design setting only. So one very important thing you have to observe here that this setting of your joint checks will only available when you are going to use your IS139202016 code. So instead of using 2016 if you are going to use 1993 code at that time this setting will not be available to you. So this setting is going to be available only when you are going to use latest code of your ductile design. And this joint checks which you are looking right now is taken from this code only. And the clause for this is 7.2. So this is the clause for this check. And I have already discussed about this check in our ETAPS column design. So when I was teaching you at that time already I have discussed about this check. So right now I will just brief this thing like what this check is. So if you are going to open your IS13920 with clause number 7.2 you will find this check that is the relative strength of beam and column at the joint. So this checks only is need to be performed here. So let me brief over this check. So when you just look at this check you will find here that there is a beam here and there is a column here. And when this beam and column meet at this point there is a joint here. So this check is all over this joint. In this check moment capacity of your column is compared with the moment capacity of your beam. So if you are going to read this close above here you will find here that if you just look at here that you will find that at each beam column joint of moment resisting frame the sum of the nominal design strength of columns meeting at that joint. So it is asking you that if there is a beam column joint in that case the sum of the nominal design strength of your column meeting at joints it is asking you the column strength at that joint so this is the bracket definition of this is given the definition of the nominal strength and we will just look at here that along each principal plane sir at least 1.4 times the sum of the nominal design a strength of the beam. So your column strength should be at least 1.4 times more than the beam meeting at that joint or that plane. So this is very clear that this clause is trying to make the comparison of your column strength and the beam strength at that joint. So at that joint the nominal strength of your column meeting at that joint should be more than 1.4 times 
your normal design of your beam strength so this is very important clause and this clause is given in is 1390-2016 also one very important thing i will add it here that if this requirement is not fulfilling let's suppose that what is written is that your column design strength should be at least 1.4 times the sum of the normal strength of your beam at the joint let's suppose that this is not fulfilling this clause or we can say this uh, condition is not fulfilling in your case so what will happen in that case so this thing is written in just below of it so in the event of the beam column joint not conforming to the above the columns at that joint shall be considered to the gritty columns only and shall not be considered as a part of the lateral load resisting system so if this condition is not fulfilling the first condition which is written here that it should be fulfilled 1.4 times of your sum of your normal design strength of the beams so column strength should be at least 1.4 times the normal design strength of your beam at that joint it is not fulfilling at that case this column which you just consider should be not a part of your lateral load resisting system this will be designed as a gravity columns only so this was the very important thing that you have to remember here that and to perform these checks only in rcdc you will find these are the options now you will be wondering that then what this two option is that p max all the load combinations so i will just clear these two of the options why we have here so you know that we have to perform the joint checks so for performing the joint checks we have a different load combinations to be considered here so you know that we have a different load combinations where there is only lateral load combinations are included or gravity load combinations, wind load combinations. These are the different load combinations we have. Now it is asking that if you take this first option, so in this first option, the only load combination will be taken which is a part of your earthquake. So you know that we have a earthquake load combination of 1.2 dead load plus 1.2 live load plus 1.2 EQ then other load combinations we have 1.5 dead load plus 1.5 eq so an, one other load combination also we have like uh, 0 0.9 dead load plus 1.5 eq so if you are considering a static one then plus minus all things will be here so i will not go in deep of it so i will just try to explain you that like that we have all the load combinations earthquake along with that we have a gravity load combinations also in that no earthquake load combinations included like 1.5 dead load plus 1.5 live load then we have 1.5 dead load only these are the load commissions we have in which you will not find any earthquake here so this you can just look at it we have dead for 1.5 dead load plus 1.5 live load there is no earthquake included in this so what is happening that if you just take this p max so all the load combinations where earthquake will be included will be taken for checking of this purpose of your joint checks means if there is joint checks to be happen here then the load combinations which will contain earthquake forces will only be get considered and if you take the load combinations all load combinations in that all the load combinations which you have just given in your software in the rcdc will be considered for checking your joint check no i think you're really clear about that what these two of the options are there no i'm going to explain you a very important thing here that when you're going to perform the ductile design and in this definitely you're going to perform the joint check also so i have already explained you that when you're going to perform the joint checks or even if you're going to perform the ductile design we required a beam data also so as you know that we are going to do right now the column design but for doing this type of checks we required a beam design strength also so this thing i have already explained to you so when you just take this option that i'm going to perform the ductile design and the joint checks here and when you just give it okay here after that when you go to the level data option you will find that beam table also will come here like the concrete, a steel, cover and all. You can just look at it. Previously there was only the column and wall were there. But they have added the new table for the beam also. And for this you find that concrete, a steel and cover are there. Now you know that for the beams we are going to use the M20 only. So this I will just change to M20. I will copy this. After that I will select like this and I will just give it control V. So that every floor will get m20 here this also will change to fe 550 so cover will remain as a 25 m only so after doing this change you can just proceed to the setting here now come to the next option which is your live load reduction factor now this live load reduction factor is also there in etaps also so when i was teaching you the column design in etaps i have already explained you that what actually this live load reduction is now the same thing is here also and if you want to apply the live load reduction factor then you have to take this option 
and when you will go into edit option here you can actually give the percentage of reduction also like number of the level supported 0 percentage then number of level if 2 10 percentage number level 3 then 20 percentage like that you have to give the reduction factor in the form of percentage here no you have to just take this option because i want to consider the library reduction factor in our rcdc for our column design so i will just take this option now the next very important option you will get it here is your effective length factor now effective length factor we have already discussed in our e tabs in column design there we have seen a lot of terminology regarding the effective length factor we have seen that what is the factor we have to use it how to calculate the effective length factor so these are the important things we have already discussed in our column design in ETAPS so here what we have to do if you just go to edit option here you will find that all the effective length factor of column will come here now here we have to just give it 1.2 or even you can give it 1 also the effective length factor so just if you just look, look at here that you have an option here set value for both axes fixed 1.2 we just apply this so we'll just look at that all the column will get as a effective length factor as a 1.2 if you want to give it one here just you give it one and you just take this option so all will get converted into one here so this is very simple to give it just you just give it 1.2 here and you just take this option it will convert it to 1.2 why we are giving 1.2 these things i have already discussed in our column design in our etaps class so after giving this value you just give it ok now the next option we have a columns braced so this option will remain as a antique only because we are not going to brace our column so our column will be as a unbraced only so i will just not take this option next option we have to check our modulus of rupture for axial tension so if you want to check your modulus of rupture for axial tension then you just take this option or you can just remain as a antique only now come to the next important option which is your optimized design so if you want to optimize the design then please tick this option and by default this option is ticked only so anyhow everyone want the optimized design only so this will be ticked only now the next option we have considered slenderness effect now this slenderness effect we have already discussed in our column design in ETAPS there we have seen that when our column will become as a cylinder and what are the things we have to consider in our long column design of your column so this is the same thing the slenderness effect actually means here is a long column only so if you want to consider the long column design then you have to take this option as per is 456 if your column effective length ratio by d or effective length ratio by b is more than 12 in that case your column will become as a long column and you have to design that column as a cylinder column so this thing we have already discussed in our column design here what we have to do if you want to consider this thing then you have to take this option and if if you want that no column should be designed as a long column then you untick this option but i will just recommend you to take this option because uh, maybe some of your column may go into the long column design so better to take this option now the next is your design method so definitely in the design method you will take this resultant moment only as a combined action and uh, next is your shear wall setting so this shear wall setting i will explain you in the shear wall design when i will explain the shear wall design at that time i will explain this all the setting now come to the next option which is the minimum eccentric check now this option is very important because we want to check the minimum intensity in our column now minimum intensity check we have already discussed in our column design in ETAPS. there we have seen that how to calculate the minimum intensity these are the things we have already discussed at that time now here what we have that if you want to consider minimum intensity then if you want to apply this thing together in both of the axes together then you take this option one axis at one time then you take this option and if you want to ignore it then take this option so three options are available if you want to check both of the axis minimum intensity at a one time then you take this option one axis at a one time then take this option and if you want to ignore this check then you take this option so i will recommend you that check this as a, at one time only so minimum intensity will be checked one axis at one time then again another axis will be checked here and like that it will proceed it so just if you just give it this also no any problem you can give it this also or even you can keep it this also now we have a crack width check definitely in the column design no one want to check the crack width here so i'll just ignore this check and i think this already we discussed in the previous lecture that what are these options we have so the column design setting is completed we have discussed a lot of things regarding the column design setting here so after giving all the settings you just give it okay 
now we have come to the end of the lecture where we have seen the design setting in upcoming lectures we will look at reinforcement setting detailing and drawing settings zones and rebar settings so these are the important settings we will look at in upcoming lectures of this column design in rcds thank you for watching see you in the next lecture a span instruct has released pg program in structure design and analysis in this program you will be learning etabs safe rcdc revit and cad in very detail in this program you will be getting live classes pre recorded sessions quizzes project submissions and checking and also you will be getting a personal training also also you will be getting dedicated career service which help you to provide placement in top companies our student is placed in top companies in india also in abroad also if you want to open your own consultancy our program and team will help you to achieve that goal also this program is designed for the working professionals also it is designed for the student also so you will be getting a dashboard here and in this you will get a enroll course here after clicking in enroll course you can start learning this so this is the curriculum which we will be learning in this program and in this curriculum you will be doing total four project also in this program you will be getting live classes for the discussions and solving your doubt for the demo class open our website that is spanstack.in you will get a link in description box also and after that you just need to fill your name email address whatsapp number and choose your date time and schedule your live class you can also make a program related inquiry on given number looking forward to see you in our course program